What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and to another weekly 3D model. This week's model we're going to be doing a go-kart. It's more or less a go-kart that's being worked on on a workbench, but I saw this image online posted by Widepix Dev. They're a game art development studio and they did a great job and I thought it'd be really fun to recreate for this week's model. And if you haven't noticed already, the video is a little bit longer than usual and that's just because I shortened it up and I didn't make it as fast as it usually is, so hopefully it's a little bit easier to follow along. So let's just get started. So starting off with the cube, I'm going to start blocking out all the main shapes. Now I'm going to start off with the table since it's the largest object in the scene and it's going to be a little bit easier for me to fit all the other objects in if I get this table out of the way. So let's just start off with this and then we'll slowly move on to the others. Alright, so now that those table shapes are in place, I can start moving on to the others. So I'm going to select another cube and start blocking out those wood pieces that are going to hold up my go-kart. Alright, and then moving on to the go-kart itself, I'm going to go start with another cube and start blocking out those shapes. Now I don't know exactly all the mechanical components of a go-kart, I'm just going off of an image so some of these may be wrong and I apologize for that, I'm kind of just figuring it out as I go. So I'm just going to slowly take my time and start blocking out all these shapes.
Alright, so now that the main go-kart shapes are in place, I can start moving on to the seats and all those cushions. Now this is one area that I wish I spent a little bit more time on, and I definitely could have made them look a little bit better. I rushed it, and I just really blocked it out and kept it really simplified, but what I should have done was go in afterwards and move some of the polys to give the seats a little bit more shape, and they wouldn't look so blocked out. So it's just one thing I'm going to mention ahead of time if you are recreating this. I would spend a little bit more time on these cushions and make them look a little bit more cushiony or a little bit more puffy in areas rather than so solid. Now obviously the substance textures are going to help that with like that wave crease material, but if you can move around the geometry a little bit, you can give it a little bit more shape and it can look a little bit more realistic.
Alright, so the go-kart's coming together, I'm going to come back to it and keep refining it, but for now I'm going to go ahead and start adding a few other objects to the scene. And I'm going to start off with one of those little jugs of oil. So I'm going to go ahead and select another cube and I can start blocking out that shape. So just like we did the first jug of oil, I'm going to go ahead and do another one, but this one's going to be a little bit more squared in shape. So the oil is in place, now I can start moving on to do some of the tools. So I'm going to start off with the wrench. Now in this scene I do two different types of wrenches, one that's really low poly and one that's really high poly. So I'm going to start off with the lower poly one, I'm really not going to pay attention to the shape too much, just kind of block it out and get it into position, and then later on I can come back and refine that shape to get it looking a little bit more accurate. And keep in mind when I work, especially when I'm trying to work really quick, I don't worry too much about topology right away. It's always something I come back and clean up later on when the UVing process starts. Now, if I wasn't recording myself, I would probably spend a little bit more time worrying about topology as I'm creating the objects just to make my life a little bit easier. But to make these videos a lot shorter than they can be, I just do the touch-ups and all that during the UVing process. So keep that in mind when I'm creating these. If some of it looks a little bit off, that's just the reason I'm not worrying too much about making it perfect off the start. I'm more or less just blocking things out right now and then I can come back and work on them after. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, so that wrench is wrapped up. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it and then position them both somewhere on my table. Now, keep in mind, I'm gonna come back and refine these shapes and create a higher poly model from one of them as well, but they're good for the time being, and let's move on to create a lug wrench. Now, I already have a right-angled cylinder that's part of my cart, my go-kart that's on the front of it, so rather than creating it from scratch, I'm gonna go ahead and select that object, duplicate it over, and I can just modify it to create that lug wrench. Alright, lug wrench is done and now we can move on to creating a few boxes and just like our previous video, I'm going to keep that very simple, just create a couple cubes and then bevel out some of those edges. Alright, so next up was creating a cloth. Now a really quick and easy way of doing that is selecting a plane and then moving around some of those vertices to give that plane a little bit more shape and to kind of give it that wave look like a cloth has. So a really quick easy way to do that is by hitting B on my keyboard, by entering soft select mode, and then by clicking and dragging I can change the radius from which I want to select whatever vertices to move around. So just a really easy way of giving this plane a little bit more shape and making it look a little bit more realistic. Alright, so the scene is slowly coming together, I just need to go create a few bolts and screws that are going to be placed all over the table. So I'm going to start off with another cylinder and then I can start blocking out those bolts.
right, so the bolts are in place. I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate a few more objects into my scene and then I can start refining my go-kart a little bit. Okay, so next up was creating a little toolbox. Now my reference image didn't have this actually in the image, but I thought since that top right corner was looking a little bit empty, I should add something there and a toolbox would be relatively fitting. So I'm gonna go ahead and select a cube and start blocking this one out. Now since it's not too big in scene, I'm not gonna create too many polys. I'm gonna keep this on the lower poly side and just kind of create something just to fill in that area.
right, so the toolbox is done. Now I just want to create another tool for my table. So I'm going to go ahead and select another cylinder and I can start blocking out a little screwdriver. So while zooming out and taking a look at the scene, I thought it would look a lot better if there was an extra shelf on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and take that shelf, duplicate it, and I can slide it down. And I can start adding a few extra objects on the bottom shelf. Now one of those objects I'm going to start off with is a tire. I thought it would be fitting to add those go-kart tires that are basically just sitting there on the bottom waiting until everything's fixed up until they can be put on. So I'm going to start off with a cylinder and start blocking out those shapes. Now I'm not going to worry too much about these tires since there's on the very bottom of the shelf and not going to be too much in the scene. I don't have to worry too much about adding a lot of polys and I can get away with a lot of it in the texture and substance. So I'm going to go ahead and start blocking all these shapes out. Alright, so those tires are all wrapped up, now I just have to jump back to my go-kart. There's just a little bit more work I have to do to that, so let's just go wrap that guy up. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I didn't know exactly how these go-kart components work and how everything fits together, so it was definitely a little bit of experimenting and a little bit frustrating trying to figure this out, but I eventually did, it just took a little bit longer than I planned.
Alright, so the front objects of my go-kart are finally wrapped up. Now I'm just going to jump to that higher poly wrench I was talking about and show you exactly how I would do that. So all I'm doing is just adding this end, end piece onto my wrench. Now I'm using one of these lower poly wrenches that I used earlier and I'm just going to basically add an object at the end and add a few extra polys to it. So all I have to do is add a few edge loops and then all I would do is just delete all of these faces, combine these two objects together. And then once they're combined, all I have to do is just make sure that all these faces are lined up and then just delete them and then connect them, bridge them together. Then I just have to go in and bevel out some edges and clean everything up, but that's basically how I would connect these two pieces. And now for the front, as you can see, I didn't attach any of these polys when we were just creating the lower poly one, so there's quite a little bit of cleanup we have to do, but that's pretty easy to do. So all I'm going to do is you, with my target wall tool is connect all of these vertices. Now I want to keep it to quads if I can and you can go down to triangles but ideally I want to keep it to quads. So since there's not enough vertices I just need to add a few edge loops and then I can just start connecting all of these points. Now I'm just going to straighten these up to make it look a little bit better and I'm just going to work on this one side to quickly show you exactly what I would do and then I'm just going to recreate this for everything else. So if I hit 3 on my keyboard you can see when it's smoothed out everything flows really nicely. There's no weird end gons, everything's kept in quads and that's exactly what we're trying to do. So if I smooth this object out and I increase those subdivisions you can see that everything stays relatively clean and it looks really smooth. Now what I will do on the end is drag the subdivision down to one and have an object that looks similar like this. But this is exactly the process that I would do to create this high poly wrench. So all I'm going to do is go ahead and do the exact same steps I just showed you to finish up this high poly wrench and then I can hang them on the side of my workbench and give it a little bit more detail to my scene. So now we are just fast forward a little bit. I just jumped back in quickly to add one more object to my table just before we jump into substance and that's just a little screw or a little bolt. I basically just want to create a little bit more details and something else to look at. So starting with another cylinder, I'm going to quickly block out a little screw. Alright, so now here I am fast forward ahead once I'm done those UVs, I hung up all those wrenches on the side of my table and I'm just going to show you exactly how I did those UVs. So I did three different maps, basically broke one down to the cart itself, one that consists of all the table and a few of the objects underneath and then one that's just all the other assets, so the boxes and oils. So now let's just jump into Substance Painter and we can start texturing. Alright, so now in Substance Painter I can go load in my FBX from Maya. And once that's loaded in, I can quickly go through those UV maps just to make sure there's no overlapping and everything looks relatively fine, which it does so I can move on to bake out my textures. So I'm going to go down to those texture set settings and then go down to bake mesh maps. And then I can choose an output size. I decided to choose 4K and then make sure to check on that use low poly mesh as high poly mesh and then you can bake out your textures. Alright, so now we're ready to start texturing. So I'm going to start off with the table texture since it's the largest object in my scene, it just makes sense for me to start off there. And I can work on my way to all the other objects. So starting off with in the properties tab, I'm going to go ahead and select the smart material that I want my base color or texture to be on my table. So I'm going to choose steel since I'm assuming that this is a steel table. And then I can choose a fill layer that I can assign over that in the layers and I can choose a color for my table. Now I was very indecisive with what color I wanted. Throughout the whole texturing process I end up coming back and tweaking the setting but I'm just going to choose something that I'm happy with for now and I can always come back and tweak it later on. So once I'm happy with the color I can right click set that to a black mask and then I can add a generator. 
So I want to create a little bit of metal edgeware and there's a metal edgeware generator. So I'm going to assign it to that. Now all I have to do is just invert it and then start dragging that wear level slider depending on how much edgeware I want to show on my model. Once I'm happy with how it looks, I can go over to my mask tab and select a different mask to apply to my table. So I want to create a little bit of surface wear. So I'm going to go select the surface wear mask and drag that right over to my fill layer. Now all I have to do is just change that to a multiply. That way I can show the metal edge wear from the mask that's below it. And then just like we did before, just invert it and then start changing the balance depending on how much wear I want on the top surface of my table. And then once I'm happy with that, I can start adding a few other masks as well. So I want to create a little bit more scratches on my table. So there's a really nice surface scratches mask. And just like we did before, I'm going to click and drag and drop that onto my fill layer. And then it's just a matter of, just like we did before, switching that to a multiply so I can retain all the other details we added before. And then just inverting that and then dragging the slider depending on how much scratches and where I want on my table. And then once again, just jumping back to that original color and the metal roughness, depending on that metal that's showing through from the masks, I can always change the specularity depending on how I want that metal to show. And just by adding these masks and these layers, it just gives you a lot of control off your materials and you can make your textures look pretty accurate to what you have in mind. So once I'm happy with that, I can start moving on to my cloth material. And once again, I'm gonna to go to my smart materials and select one of those. I really like these camo ones, they're really great. But just to remove that camo color, I'm gonna go ahead and just select the color code from the very first color, depending on what I choose. And I can copy that over to all the other camo colors so it's one consistent color throughout. Alright, and then next up is moving on to the metal materials. So I'm just going to go back to my smart materials, select one of those that I like, and start applying those to my meshes. All right. 
Alright, so the table texture is looking good. I'm just going to quickly jump onto my objects texture so I can start moving on to those boxes. Now I downloaded some of these cardboard box materials from the Substance Source website, so jump on there if you want to reuse these. But I'm just going to quickly assign these to my boxes and start tweaking some of these settings. Alright, so next up is moving on to the box labels. So I quickly jumped onto Google and found a few box labels that I thought were fitting. And then I quickly just dragged those right into my scene. Now the first one I dragged in was just a texture itself and I thought it'd be a lot easier if I actually assigned alphas instead of textures. So I quickly jumped into Photoshop, inverted the colors to make them black and white, and I re-imported it so I can basically just assign a plastic material to my object. And then I could just change the alpha and then choose the specific alpha I brought in that can paste those right on. And the reason for this is I thought I would have a little bit more control off of the color of the text and the specularity of that shininess of the actual label itself. And it just gives me a little bit more control rather than just pasting it on as a texture. Now, this original alpha that I have is a square box, and this first box that I actually has a little bit more rectangular, so it's going to take a little bit extra work. All I'm doing is just creating a few extra layers, and then all I have to do is just change the position of where I'm pasting on this alpha right onto my mesh. So it works very easily for my other boxes since they're square, I can just directly paste them on. Now, since this one's a little bit more rectangular, it's going to take a little bit more work to create a few extra layers, but I'm just going to paste this alpha directly onto my boxes. Alright, so the boxes are wrapped up, now I'm just going to quickly jump back to my table to tweak that color a little bit, and then I can move on to those wood meshes that I have that are holding up my go-kart. Alright, so quickly before adding some textures to these oils, I'm just going to jump back to my table so I can add a few small details. So I quickly jumped onto Google and just googled some go-kart stickers or some brands or some oil brands and just took a few of those images and saved them as JPEGs or PNGs and I can drag those directly into my substance file as textures. So all I'm going to do is just paste those directly onto my table mesh just to act as if some stickers were stuck on the side of my table just to make it look a little bit more interesting to look at. And all I have to do is just change some of the blending modes or choose different eraser brushes just to help blend these stickers into my table to act as if they were 
actually there and just worn out a little bit from all the scratches that are on my mesh. It just will be a little bit more fitting if I can blend these stickers in a little bit. Alright, so now that all those stickers are applied to my table, I can continue on with my objects texture and move on to those oils. So very similar to how I did those stickers on my table, I'm going to do the exact same process for these oils. I just found the images on Google and I'm just going to directly paste these onto the mesh and then choose a different texture or material and substance painter to help blend into that object. So I'm just going to spend the next little bit adding these materials and textures to my oils.
right, so now we have textures applied to our oils. Next up is the other objects in our scene. So I'm just gonna quickly jump to that toolbox so we can start texturing that one. Now I was originally gonna choose a different color for my toolbox since the red color was gonna be the color of my go-kart. But in my head, the classic toolbox is red, so I had no choice. So I decided to go with red as well and just tweak the color so the shade was a little bit different than my go-kart was gonna be. So really quickly before moving on to the go-kart, I'm just going to texture these tires that are on the bottom. So I'm just going to choose one of those rubber tire textures that come with Substance and apply it to those meshes. Alright, so next up is moving on to the go-kart. So I'm going to go ahead and select one of those smart materials and I can apply it to that mesh and start tweaking some of those settings. So while I was just tweaking to these settings, I realized that the scratches and that wear just wasn't working for me. So I just decided to remove some of those masks that were already applied to that smart material. And very similar to how we did the table texture, I'm just going to go ahead to this mask tab and go add my own wear and scratches to this mesh. So for the next little bit, I'm just going to tweak some of these settings until I found something I was happy with, and then I can choose another metal material that comes with substance to apply to my other meshes on my go-kart.
So next up was just doing that large number seven that I had on the very front and on the back little license plate. So similar to how we did all the other textures and labels in the scene, I'm just gonna jump onto Google and just find an image of a number. I could have just created this in Photoshop, but I found one on Google to make my life that much easier. So I saved that as an image, drag that directly into my project as this texture into the current session. And then I can paste that texture directly onto my mesh. Now all I do for the front one is just change some of the blending modes just to have it look like it a different type of texture on the very front and then on the back one all I do is directly just paste it on normally. So I spend the next little bit just adding these front and back numbers to my go-kart. Alright, so once those numbers are applied, I just have my leather materials to apply to those seats. So I'm just going to go choose one of those leather crease materials that come with Substance Painter and I can just assign those to those meshes. Finally, the last object in the scene is just this little screwdriver, so we're going to go select a few other smart materials and apply it to this final mesh. Alright, so now quickly jumping into the renderer, I can take a look at how the model's looking. So one of the things I'm going to quickly do is just raise that floor height up, just so it matches the bottom of my model. And then I'm just going to scroll down to the environment settings and change my environment map from panorama to one of those studio lights, just to help make my materials pop and make the whole scene look a little bit more accurate to what I had in mind. Thank you. 
And then finally, I'm going to scroll down to those camera settings and I can change that focal length. Substance comes preset at 17, which I think is fairly low, so I'm just going to bump that up to 35, even possibly 50, just so I can have a more realistic perspective of what this model would look like in real life. Then I can take a little closer look at the model to see if there's anything else I can improve before jumping to my final renders. And one of those things that I noticed that I could do and I forgot to do was adding some little weld marks around where these poles intersect. So I'm going to quickly jump back into my editor and I'm going to go back to that cart texture and I can open up that texture that's applied to that red paint. And all I have to do is just add basically a material. I can add a fill layer right below it, but I'm just going to go add one of those plastic materials like I usually do and then add a height channel to that so I can go paint on a little bit of height, a bump, I can go choose different brushes. I end up finding a weld brush that worked pretty well that comes with substance, but just go to choose one of those brushes, increase your height so you can add a little bit of bump around where those objects intersect that basically create that illusion of some welding marks. Alright, so quickly jumping back into the renderer to take a look at the model, there's just one other small detail I want to add before wrapping it up. And that small detail I want to add is just some wear marks right where your feet would be from wearing out that paint. Just because the go-kart looks pretty used and beaten up, I want to add some rusty marks right where your feet would go. So I'm just going to quickly jump back into the editor and add some rust material that's right over top of my paint material. And then I can just assign that to a black mask and choose some certain dirt brush and I can paint on that rusty material right where those foot marks would go. And that's basically everything. That's the whole texturing and modeling process that I did to create this go-kart slash go-kart workstation. If you liked the video, give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see more weekly 3D content. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one.